Hello, University of Michigan content managers. This is the fourth video in our series on using Content Manager Desktop and the first one that's going to be using live data. We're going to be touching a little bit on the live data object, but we're going to focus today on the content feed object, which is a simpler way of using live data on your signs. We're going to use a Google Sheet. You don't have to use a Google Sheet. You could use Excel to make the sheet. Don't use the Excel file for the sign. If you do use Excel to make it, export as a CSV. The reason for that is if you use Excel, 4Wins, the, the player that runs 4Wins has to load Excel in the background and then it closes Excel when it's done. Uh, Excel takes a while to open and close that time comes out of your content time. So if you're showing a field for 20 seconds, like I'm showing here, and you need it up for 20 seconds, let's say it's a video and the first 20 seconds are important, uh, first 10 seconds are important. The first 10 seconds are lost as Excel is loading. And then it will show the last 10 seconds of your video and you'll miss the beginning. The other reason that we recommend Google is the saving feature of uh, Excel versus Google or any folder. You could do the same in Google and go to file, download as a CSV and it will download a CSV file and you could store that in your sign that works. Uh, the downside is every time you change this, you have to do that again. Same thing with Excel. Don't let whatever the application is add this one that will make it a different file and the sign will not be reading that. It's looking for DI demonstration sheet one. DI demonstration sheet five does not work. The sign is still looking at this. If you use Google Sheets the way we're going to demo here, then you don't have to worry about that. It's always going to update it because the sign is forced to come back to Google uh, and update directly from the sheet and go, okay, you're going to go back to the sheet. You're going to re-download your own copy. You're going to look at it. When you're done, I want you to come back to the internet resource, in this case, Google, download a new copy of the sheet. There's a couple things to call out. Number one is these headers. Whatever you name these headers, and some of them are important, you have to use specific names, don't change them. If you change them once you start using them, the sign no longer knows what to look for. Let's say that you told it to look for a field called start playing, and you called it start time afterwards. It's still looking for start playing, and it won't find it, and it will break the sign. Uh, so don't change it once you've started. The two that are important, and you have to use specific names, are the URL field and the duration field. The content feed object knows what those are and is looking for those specifically. If you don't have them, it won't work. This formula right here, if you're using the data feed object, uh, you probably do not want to type in this full URL every time you're loading an image. Uh, per our first video, this URL actually maps to your drive space. So this is that URL is the web accessible space for this. So if I go load this image here, uh, that one loads quicker than the other one, you'll notice I now have that picture. And that is this picture that is here. Same picture. I don't want to type this link every time I go to it. So what this formula does is it has that link in there and it's appending this to that link. Um, that way I don't have to type it. And if I add something new down here, it adds that to it. Uh, it is important that these file names, that's not actually a file, so let's delete that line, it's important that these file names are correct. If I change the name of this to Austin underscore zero two, it's gonna add that link to it, but that's not a file. If we try to go to it, it's gonna say 404 not found. Uh, so you need to make sure that whatever you're typing these file names is actually the name of the file. The other thing to call out here is these empty fields. These need to be actually empty. If you go over here and you add a space, that is a computer character. It thinks that's the name of the file. You can see it's adding it and going, okay, that's a file name. Where do I find whatever that is? It doesn't have an extension and it doesn't know what to do with it. It's gonna be another error on your sign. So it's important that these actually stay blank and you check for those kinds of errors. You can, uh, in Google Sheets, take these and delete them all and just go, I don't, don't want those because they could just be errors. 
Now, with our sheet set up here, I have a series of images that are stored in my uh, directory, my network drive. It's converting that to a URL. Uh, and then I have the start playing, stop playing times I'm going to use for the sign. And then I have this duration field here. This is what the content feed object is going to read to see how long to play that. With these here, I can get this link prepared for it to be used with the digital sign. We need to go into the file and we need to share it. So go to file, share with others. The sign does not have a Google account. It's not a member of the University of Michigan. So you can't tell it only the University of Michigan has access or share it with a specific individual. Instead, you need to change it so that anyone with the link can view. Again, our warning, don't put any uh, protected information here. No health information, no student records, nothing like that. That shouldn't be on your sign to begin with. Don't put it in your sheet. The next thing that you need to go to file, go to share, publish to the web. You'll see this page here, entire document, go to CSV, hit publish. Yes, good. With these here, I can get this link prepared for it to be used with the digital sign. So let's take this link and let's examine what this is. So we have our original link right here. This is to our spreadsheet. Uh, and there are two pieces of information we need out of it. One is going to be called the ID. The other one is called the GID. The ID is the first one. That's this series of hexadecimal numbers here. They are seemingly random. They represent your sheet to Google. So we're going to grab that and we're going to paste it aside right here. The next one that we need is this GID. Most people, this will be zero. The next tab and any subsequent tabs that you might make on that sheet are not one. It is not sequential. It will be another number that is assigned to it by Google, representing that particular tab in that series of spreadsheets. Uh, we're going to grab that, set that aside. And now we have this formula down here that we're going to edit. We're going to provide this in the documentation that accompanies this, that we are going to plug those numbers into, just copy and paste, and we will get a link that forces anyone visiting that link to download a copy of that spreadsheet. Um, so we first take this ID, and wherever it says ID here, we're plugging it in. With the ID, it is important not to uh, include the slashes when you copy it, uh, or erase them when you paste it. Uh, you're always doing what's between those slashes. Uh, I'll hi highlight them here in a magenta for you so it's uh, a little bit easier to see what you're avoiding. Uh, that one and that one. Um, highlighting won't do anything to the link. Then we need to paste this ID somewhere else, and that's after this equal sign where it says ID here. Uh, paste that in there. In this case, you're avoiding uh, killing the equal sign here, and you're avoiding getting rid of this ampersand here. The last step is taking this GID here and plugging that in as well. And then this link is good to go. You'll notice that if I go to a new tab, paste it in, enter, I get a download down here in the left-hand corner. It's downloaded a copy of that CSV. That's going to do that to the sign every time it hits its predefined update interval. Let's go into four wins, right click on the content folder, select new content in this category and select content feed. We're going to get this new window that pops up. We need to name this object, uh, DI demonstration content feed. All right, description and label I'm going to leave blank for now. And then I'm going to paste my URL, the thing that we created over here, into this URL. If everything works or you want to test it, click this little folder here with the triple dots. Don't click this arrow. What this actually does is uploads it to our server, which will work, except now it's not going to update in the same way. So don't, don't do that. Uh, click this. And you should see these fields fill out. Uh, and if you hit test, you should get something that looks like this. It should not look like unreadable web code. If you've done that, if you get that, something is not published or shared. Um, it should say your headers off the bat and then the data underneath it should look like your data. So Austin2, JPG, comma, and then the URL for it, and then my start date and my stop date. 
The other thing that you need to know about in here is duration. Duration is how long are you going to show this content object for it. In this case, we've got a little bit of a weird situation because these rows are not going to be exactly the same. If you tell it duration and just leave it as this and say, I want you to show it for 20 seconds. What it should do is go to this, pick the two objects. It will try to match the 20 seconds as close as it can. If it picked row three, Austin four for 20 seconds and row 11, because remember I've got it set to random for 10 seconds, it will show both these images and then it will stop. Even though that's over the 20 seconds, it'll just keep going and say, okay, I'll show it for the additional 10 seconds, then I'll move on. If you use exact duration, then I'm stuck at 20 seconds. In our previous example, what it would do is show Austin four for 20 seconds. And then even though it's supposed to show two images and it should show the Naples Bay for 10 seconds, it's gonna move on to the other content object going, I'm sorry, I'm out of time, I can't show you. Now, this would work. It's going to go to this, uh, sorry, it's gonna to go to this spreadsheet. It's going to read this URL and it's gonna read this duration. It's gonna play all those files in there for whatever the duration says. Um, now we might want to set up some filtering. So let's go to some filtering and sorting and take a look at these objects. These are true for both the content feed object and they are true for the live data object. The first one that we're gonna work with is filter. Filter allows you to say, show out of my data, show only this. So in our case, start and stop time. But you could use it for specific types of signs. Maybe you've got five different types of signs and for some signs you wanna show some images and not others. Then you could go to your live data and add columns here that say vertical and horizontal. Uh, you could add lobby and hallways and put X's there and tell it only show it where hallway equals X or only show it where lobby equals X or vertical, whatever you'd like. Uh, so you can use those additional filters. You can find, filter as much as you want. Uh, we're gonna add a field. And the first one here is duration, but we're gonna go through and if we hooked up this sign right, these fields will be the headers that we had. So we want start playing. Then we have this is value. For start playing, it's important to know that you don't want to click on value, you want to click on is. When you click on is, you're going to get this new field that says text, contains, is, starts with, ends with, is not, uh, numeric, greater than, less than, all those kind of things, is not equal. We want date and time for this, and we want to go to uh, start playing is on or before, and then it'll fill in now. We are filtering in things, not filtering out things. So start playing is on or before. So the start date should be before. Now that makes sense. Uh, I also want to add stop playing. Same thing. Stop playing. Click on is. Date and time is on or after now. Now if you have a need, you can click on now and change the, the date time to today offset by one day that's possible, and there's a use case for that. Uh, the start playing now will say that it should stop playing on this date. Uh, cursor is really useful. Let's say that you have multiple content objects that are showing on your sign in the main region. Uh, you have a data feed that shows photos like I have here, and then you want a calendar show. Every time it comes back to the content feed, it's going to start at the beginning but I have a lot of rows here and I don't want to only ever show Austin, Austin. I wanna show other things. Uh, how do I do that? You do that through this cursor and you can click on this and say, I want you to fetch the next two rows, one row, whatever it is, each time you play and I want you to wrap around when the end is, end is reached. Minus this top header row here, I have 27 rows. If I told it that you're gonna fetch the next two rows each play, eventually it's gonna hit a point where 27 does not divide nicely by two. So I really need to tell it at the end when you hit 29, I need you to select 29 and row two. 
because row one's a header, it's not going to play that. And that way it, it does fetch two images. That allows you to say, show this object, fetch two rows, play the next content object. When you come back to me, fetch two entirely new rows. Update interval. This is how often it is going to come back and check that sheet. Remember we said before that if you use the method that we're recommending here, a periodic download, we're telling it currently every 15 minutes, go re-download that sheet. That's how it knows to go check that sheet. That's how I can continue to edit this sheet, add new content, and never have to go back into Four Winds and touch this. If you do save your own independent CSV into a spreadsheet, uh, into your, your folder, um, your network folder, then that will still work. It'll say, hey, I'm going to go to that every 15 minutes in download. You just have to make sure that you saved the, the copy of the CSV over the other CSV. Alternate content is what should the sign do if it looked at this data and nothing met the criteria or one of these images is spelled wrong or has a space or an underscore where there doesn't exist in the file name, what should I do? We recommend you pick an image, uh, maybe a giant block M, that means something to you and maybe someone in the office that's constantly near the sign that triggers that this sign has something wrong with it, but it doesn't look that way to anyone that is casually viewing the sign sheet. So if this entire spreadsheet goes down, if someone comes in here and goes, ha ha, I don't like it called URL, I'm gonna call this image name with you know weird capitals because my capital C is not is on. That just broke the content feed and none of these is gonna work. Um, so because of that, every one of these is gonna break and the sign's gonna come back to it. Uh, I'm supposed to show two images, and I'm supposed to show them over 20 seconds, and I can see a start time and play time, but where is the image file? Uh, and it will keep doing that. Uh, and it will eventually cause your sign to crash if there's enough errors over a short period of time. Uh, then you have to come back in here and change this and say, no, it's, it's URL, and then it'll work again. Now, to set your alternate content, you're gonna click in this file, and you're gonna get this navigation window on the left-hand side in miniature. So you click through here and go through and find whatever it is that you want it to show. Uh, it's not gonna show because this should work. And then we go to our advanced tab, and down at the bottom, we have our scaling behavior. I want you to uh, center and fit to container. It's going to respect the proportions of the images. So I might get some letterbox. In fact, I definitely will because these aren't 16 by 9. Um, letterbox on a sign, but I won't get weird image sizes uh, stretching. I'm going to click OK because I did. And then click OK. And now we're largely filling this area. Again, you'll notice that these have letterbox on the sign. These are not this is a 16 by 9 sign, 1920 by 1080 in this case. Uh, actually, 3840 by 2160, which is also 16 by 9, but there you go. Um, and it's filling this region with what it can. Now, you're also noticing it's picking random images. You saw the image of Stevie Ray Vaughan in Austin, Texas there twice because it, random's random. So it's just going to sit there and play these. Uh, there's a nice 16 by 9 filling the whole sign. And that's all there is to the content feed object. Uh, keep in mind that this can be used to show image files and video files. It can't be used to show PDFs or, um, or PowerPoints. Those are not image files natively. You can use those to export and it will create uh, an image file and that will work. You could add that to your spreadsheet and then uh, route them through this. Uh, the next video is going to be covering live data, which builds on a lot of what we've already done here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, I've been James Langerich for ITS Digital Signage, and you have a good day.